Welcome to The Coaching Game. I'm Laurie Lawson, and tonight my guest is Diana Robb. Diana, I am so thrilled to have you here. She's straight in from Southern California. I'm so <laughs> happy to be here. Somebody told me about this book that you wrote called Writing for Bliss. Um, and I have to say that I got captivated by this. And um, so we're going to find out what this is. It's, it's, it's really a seven-step plan for t how to tell your story and write it down. And I don't know what you want to do with it, but hey, <laughs> whatever you, whatever you want to do with it, that's good. Tell me, um, tell, me, tell me a little bit about your background and then how this came about. Well, it's good to be back in New York because I was born in New York Yay. and I've been gone for over 50 years. <laughs> and she got stuck in traffic, so she's right back uh, where I she should totally be. I <laughs> totally understand <laughs> yes. it. I was breathing and meditating in the cab and all was Brought good. back many memories. Uh, a lot yes, of memories. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, so my writing life actually began when I was 10 years old. Mm. I was raised in Queens. And my grandmother, my parents were immigrants, and my grandmother was my caretaker, you know, and back in the 50s, the... Um, working was really important. Mm -hmm. And so my grandmother was my caretaker and we had a wonderful relationship. She taught me how to type on a typewriter. And, and then one day when I went into her room, knocked on her door, she didn't answer. And long story short, she took her life. Mm. And my mother had been an English major and she didn't know what to do. Back in the 50s and 60s, there was no such thing as therapy. And so she handed me a Cahal Gibran journal and she said, I'm dealing with my own stress and mourning, just write your feelings. And so I spent many hours in my room, in my closet, writing letters to my grandma, telling her I missed her. Of course, back then I didn't realize the permanence of death, uh, and I wasn't allowed to go to the funeral. And I think since then I've used writing for healing. I mm. then became a very troubled teenager in the 60s growing up in New York, <laughs> got into some trouble, and I <laughs> journaled my yes. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Journaled my way through that. Mm. I was on bed rest with three of my kids, and wow. I journaled through that. Uh, and then I had two cancer diagnoses, journaled through that. Had a lot of lost loved ones in my life, journaled through that. You have a stack of books. <laughs> I do. I have closets and closets. I don't know right. what I'm going to do with them, but that's the next generation's yes, <laughs> not problem, problem, not my problem. <laughs> and so um, always I've turned to journaling and writing for healing. A lot of my journals actually turned into books and this was one of them and my mm. pregnancy book turned into a self-help book for people dealing with difficult pregnancies and then I was a medical journalist so I've really always used writing for healing and then writing has always been my passion starting when I was 10 years old and that was over 60 years ago. That's amazing. Yeah. You're so honest, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's amazing that your mother would think to do that. Was mm -hmm. she a writer? She was not a writer, but my grandmother was a journal keeper. Oh. <laughs> and so I found her journal. Actually, that was my first memoirs. I found her journal uh, in her closet when my parents moved from Queens, a uh, journal about her being orphaned in World War I. Wow. And that turned into my second book called Regina's Closet. And that was very revealing because mm. she was orphaned at the age of 11 and just the demons she lived with. You know, we talk about demons, we're talking about suicide, unfortunately, a little more than we'd like to lately. Yeah. But I, I she had so many. on the rise for some reason. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I lost my father at age 10 also, oh. and, and I did realize the permanence of death, and it's like, what do you do yes. as a 10-year-old? As yeah. um, I think that was brilliant that mm -hmm. your mother gave you um, an outlet. It was so a gift. It was yeah. a real yeah. gift, and I don't think she realized that it really set the platform for my life as a writer. So yeah. the things we do for children just stay with us. It, yes. uh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So this book came about as just you want to sh have everybody write? Is yeah. that it? It's kind of cool. <laughs> it got me going. Oh, I'm so happy. I was, I was um, I'll tell you why I love it, and I'll tell you right now. She's got prompts for writing. So I was doing journaling in the morning, ah, gratitude, kind of complaining, whatever, <laughs> gratitude, bitching, whatever, whatever took place that day. But she has fantastic prompts in here about how to do this, you know, write about this. Mm. And it, it, and if you follow them, you really have some interesting writing going on. So what what's the impetus behind this? It's like, I want everybody to have my experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is actually my ninth book, and it's really a culmination of my life's work of writing for healing and teaching others writing for healing. 
uh, every time I got a cancer diagnosis, I went back to school. First, I went for my MFA, then I went for my <laughs> <laughs> doctorate in psychology, and this was actually the beginning of my research. I I did research on writing for healing, uh, writing memoir, writing for healing, and I interviewed some very esteemed writers, mm. and so. I thought after I did the research, well, I'd like to share this with the public. So I wanted to turn it into a trade book, which is what this is, and I included some of the research, why people write memoirs for healing, and came up with some interesting results. Very. <laughs> yes. I mean, a lot of people start writing memoir because they just feel like they have to tell a story. It's like a burning need. Mm -hmm. And you might start writing for one reason, like to write about someone that has passed away. But like I found when I was writing Regina's Closet, one of the real reasons I wrote it was to keep her alive. Wow, yeah. I kept yeah. her alive by writing about her and studying her life and her mm. life in Poland and then when she immigrated to New York. And so it was a beautiful process and I love sharing that with others and th just watching the self-discovery in my workshops. I'll bet, yes. I'll bet. So, and by the way, I'm glad that you journal. That's fantastic. <laughs> I just, uh, maybe about a year, I finally oh, kept saying I was going to do it, and then finally I said, you know what, it, it doesn't take great. that long. Let's no. go for it. Let's yes. go for it. So, as you are doing this, it's, you are telling, or in here you have, there are different reasons that people write. Mm -hmm. One is um, healing, yes. And what are some of the other reasons that people just sh should or do write? Well, there's all kinds of reasons, you're absolutely right, but I think one of the main reasons is people have a burning need to write. I have people that come to my workshops and say, <laughs> everyone says I have so many stories to tell and I don't know where to start. Yeah. So the first thing I have them do is make a list of five transformative moments in their life and then pick one to write about and then they just write and they write and they can't stop. Wow. So it's all about having this need to share a story, whether they have it published or want to have it published or if it's for their family, it's just feels good and there's a self-discovery that happens on the in, along the way it's it's almost inevitable right yes. and when you start um, writing what what is the difference between because everyone thinks oh I need to take a writing class and mm -hmm. then I need to have a structure right. there, there's also free stream writing right mm -hmm. where you just <laughs> yeah. spit it out just write it down and, and whatever comes to mind so what are, what are the differences there and, and are there um, attributes and, and detriments to both or yeah, that's a great question. So there's two kinds of writing. One is prompt directed, and there's a lot of prompts, like you said, in the book mm -hmm. to help people who don't know where to start. And then the other kind, which I teach, is stream of consciousness writing, which Virginia Woolf also called automatic writing. So basically, mm -hmm. you would start out first thing in the morning and say, right now, I feel like, and then just keep going. And there's no beginning, middle, and end to that kind of writing. You just kind of write to see where it takes you. You could start writing about oh, it's raining, I don't know if I want to get out of bed. And before you know it, you're talking about an event that may have maybe happened 20 years ago. <laughs> and I so it takes you down a self-discovery yeah. path. And yeah. it, because it, what it does is it taps into your subconscious mind, stream of consciousness mm -hmm. writing. Now, now, is there, because uh, I write all day long on my computer, is there a difference with, with putting pen to paper and clicking on those eternal keyboards? <laughs> and yeah. that, is that because I feel like I, I you feel, feel there's a difference? I do, I do. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious what you feel the difference. I is. feel that it's um, it, it's me and the paper, mm -hmm. and it's like there's no dings, there's no messages on the side, and it's just and it's very per it's more personal. Mm -hmm. It's more um, organic, I guess, for lack of a better word. It's just like a connection, yeah. You're connecting to the paper. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. And studies have actually proven and shown that when you write with a pen and paper, creativity has a, an easier way of getting in because you you do have that, that connection. Actually, all three of my, well, my first four books, all of them were started in my journal. <coughs> Excuse me. That's okay, <laughs> that happens. Um, all, th all of my books were started on a journal because I hmm. find that that's where my creative process begins. Uh, I get that question a lot in class, and really? uh, a lot, because there are people that, like I was helping uh, Tom Steinbeck, son of John, work on his memoir before he passed. Wow. And I told him um, he, he should be journaling because he's got so much that's going on in his head about his life as the son of John Steinbeck and various other stories of going through Vietnam. And he says, I can't read my handwriting. I hate it. And there's a lot of people that just don't like their handwriting. So if 
if that's the case and you really hate journaling, then of course journaling on the computer is absolutely fine. Yeah. You should never have an excuse not to write. Well, I <laughs> find that my head works faster than my hand. Uh -huh. And it's like, <laughs> and I'm going, whoa, I skipped a word, and oh, I don't know how to spell that. So, so just smart. keep going. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, I don't yeah, think so. Yeah. But I'll take that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, and, and who's going to be able to read this? It's like, hopefully I can. Yeah. But it, I, I keep doing it, and I resist the temptation because I know a lot of online courses, and mm -hmm. they go, and here's journals, and here's your notes. And mm -hmm. it's like, I'm never going to read. I have so much stuff on the computer. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel that it, it's, I feel like you're really making a connection when, when you do that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's and studies if you can't that. read it, so what? Yeah, so what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the yeah. next question that always the people ask is, well, I'm writing about personal things. Like, what, what, what if someone finds it? And I said, well, what are you afraid of? Mm. You've just got to have the courage. And, and the next question people ask is, should I burn my journals? Oh. <laughs> and, you know, of course, someone who... Seems a bit uh, radical. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, there are some therapists that believe mm -hmm. that, you know, especially if you're going through trauma, write it and tear it up. So it's... Oh, that's a, that's a whole therapy. Absolutely. And yeah, just write it and send therapy. it out to the universe or whatever yeah. you do with it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that's not my philosophy because I think yeah. that they're good reference points perhaps for the future. Mm -hmm. And I've got to fill up your closets with something. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah. well, we know what the closet looks like. <laughs> so what what are people going to find in, in here when, when I know what they're going to find, but you tell us. What, mm. are, what are people going to find in here? The prompts, I'm telling you. It's worth it just for the prompts. <laughs> it's like the prompts are really – uh, one was like, um, I think it's prompt number one. It's like go to a place that you normally go. Go to a, a, dif mm -hmm. a different place than where you are right now and look at it through the eyes of an alien. Or, mm. or And it was like – Oh my gosh! And I'm sitting on my balcony, just taking it for granted. I go, no, this is so. And and you you really you get your imagination gets kicked out. Yeah, yes. yeah. And so I would get it just for the prompts. <laughs> <laughs> but what else are they going to find? There's other stuff in there. What Thank else you. are they going to find? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of prompts. There's a lot of references at the end for other books that could mm -hmm. help you on your writing journey, whether you want to write memoir or poetry. Uh, so what do we have in here? Basically, I I said the tone with my own writing journey, like what we had talked about, mm -hmm. and I talk about the various things that I've been through and how writing has helped me, how it's helped my students. I interject that with how-tos. For example, yeah. how to yeah. how to go, get going, how to set up your sacred space so that when you go to it, you know that this is my time to write, whether it's having a candle on the table, starting to journal, whether it's going for a walk, mm -hmm. whether it's having a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, something that gets you in the zone. And having that special place, I used to journal and write a lot at bookstores, which there aren't many of anymore in California anyway. <laughs> I know, obsolete. Yeah, and the <laughs> coffee shops, you know, coffee shops are great, you know, the yeah. white noise in the background. And so setting up a sacred space to, to do your writing, having the right tools, having the right inspiration, and also how to find courage, because sometimes the stories, the personal stories we want to tell could be painful. And do you have any courage <laughs> tips? I have any courage tips. <laughs> <laughs> Just write through it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Like, you okay. know, you can write about what you're what are you scared about? What have we got to be <laughs> scared about? This woman can make a book out of anything. I love it. Huh? No, <laughs> no, actually, my first yeah. cancer diagnosis, my wonderful father in law who went through the Holocaust, it's the first thing he said to me is have no fear. Hmm. Because what are you afraid of? We're all born, we're all going to die, we're all going to have road bumps, wrong right, way, roadblocks. Right. And so really have no fear, you know. Uh, when I found my grandmother's journal, I found out that my grandparents were living in the same house and divorced for umpteen years. Hmm. Never talked about in the 60s, of you know, you don't not. talk about <laughs> the divorce. Uh, and she wasn't fearful. I was amazed, and it was a real gift to find it. So, So we talk about that, we talk about courage, we talk about... Uh, ways to transcend the the ordinary, ways to get deeper into your work, mm -hmm. writing about your emotional truth, not anyone else's, which is a big part of it because sometimes we live in the same house, we're raised with the same person, and but we see things totally differently. And it doesn't mean the other person's story is wrong and yours is right. It means that we wear different color glasses. Yeah. You know, the, the Tobias Wolf and his brother Jeffrey Wolf wrote two memoirs, and you wouldn't know that they were brothers. Really, I have beautiful. a feeling my sister and I would be the same way. You see, yeah. and that's okay, and yeah. that's beautiful. And so mm -hmm. we talk about that. We also talk about the importance of 
I should say we, I'm saying I. I wrote about the, the importance royal of we. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the royal we. Uh, about finding your bliss, and that is finding what you're here for. Like, what's your life passion? Mm. And prompts to help you because that's the bliss really is tied to what makes you happy and finding what brings you joy, what makes your heart sing. We do a lot of prompts about that. And uh, I often tell students to go back to what brought them joy as a kid, and oftentimes mm. that's connected to their future. I was always teaching kids to write in the backyard, and I was doing my own writing. So here I am, umpteen years later. Okay. It's Carrying a, on. Yeah. <laughs> so. Carrying on. So what, are you saying that anybody can write? I do believe. The, the, I do believe. It, it, we don't all have to be. James Patterson. I can't think of anybody else. A, a, a mega bookseller, anything. Yeah. But but anybody can actually write if they can do, think they can write. Yeah. yeah, I do believe. But I think if you want to be a writer, a published writer in particular, you have to read a lot, and you should read in the genre that you want to publish in. Uh, I think uh, yes, I believe anybody can write. Not everybody could be Stephen King or you know mm -hmm. New York Times bestselling writer, but. To me, that doesn't matter. It's just getting the story out on the page, and it's and the story that only you can tell. That's the beauty about personal writing. You can't write my story. I can't write yours. I mean, we could do biographies of one another, but I don't really know what's in your heart. I don't know what you're feeling, uh, and it's not so much sharing. Well, today I went to the store, and this is who I met, and I had lunch with. It's about what are your feelings about that experience, yeah, exactly. and that's what uh, person is personal writing that I'm focusing mm -hmm. on in the book is about. And I do tap into poetry, too. I noticed that there's a whole chapter on poetry uh, about, I, get, I, I didn't get there. That's <laughs> I okay. It's, I, I, it's was a lot busy the, I was busy in the journaling at this point. But so what What I'm I'm thinking is, what, what I know there's a, a fear, as you say, a fear mm -hmm. of, oh my God, I don't want to be too vulnerable. I don't want to tell my family secrets. I don't want to... Um, you know, reveal too much about myself. But if, what makes me keep writing, and I'm not doing this for public purposes, but it's like, imagine, remember the joy when you found someone in a book who had the same feeling mm -hmm. you did, and you go, oh my God, I thought mm -hmm. I was the only person in the whole yeah. world. So I think, I think as a service to others also, I'd, whatever you do with the work, it's like, just remember, you can't be the only person out there. You're not that unique. I know you want to think you are, but you're yeah. not that unique. There, there are other people out there probably going through the same thing. Different levels, of course, but like you say, your grandmother in the 60s, and now yeah. kids that don't yeah. even make it to their 20s are just choosing that as, the, as a problem solver, you know? And so I, there's got to be, um, I, think, I think I like what you said, push through. Just push through. Yeah, just push through. And actually, when you go back in time and look at all the great American and world literature, all the stories, it's the same subjects, really. There's life, death, there's love, <laughs> there's murder, there's maybe suicide. There's all kinds of stories. But it's how they're told that's important. And so yeah, yeah. Um, as long as it's told from your heart, that's, that's what I really do focus mm -hmm. on in the book. Well, you, you and I are both talking. And death keems, seems to keep popping up in both mm -hmm. our lives. Yeah. Um, and I just have embraced it, and I think you have too. Mm -hmm. It's like okay, it's part of the part of the game, life cycle, <laughs> part of the, the game. Life cycle. And what what are the lessons, mm -hmm. and what are the opportunities? Mm -hmm. And like you yeah. said, it um, makes you not fritter away your mm -hmm. time. You mm -hmm. know, it's like oh, you know, we all have an infinite amount yeah. of time here. So um, another good reason to write. Yes, mm -hmm. I've I've lost a lot of good friends in the past five years, and I'm getting really good at writing eulogies. It's kind oh. of. <laughs> But you know, they usually ask writers to do that, of and so course, of course. it's my honor, but uh, it's true. I think it's, and I, my third grandchild was born pretty much around the same time that um, I lost a really good friend, and it was like the life, it just reminded me of the life cycle. Mm -hmm. That's just part yeah. of the life cycle, and you have to, like you say, embrace, and there's something to be gained from it all. Yeah, and, and that would be embrace your story, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, just embrace whatever your story is. Yes. And Feel free to tell it, you know, yeah. even if you only tell it to yourself. Yeah. I'd, I'd like, I'd, um, there was, there's a book that said was re heartfulness uh, meditation, a form, and they go, mm -hmm. and, and meditation is like having a meeting with your with your spirit, mm -hmm. who is your best friend. Yes. And that's kind of how I feel like your book yeah. is. It's like, okay, let's, let's, let's start writing from the inside mm -hmm. and talk about what's in there and yeah. put it down on paper, yeah. you know, and yeah. 
as you memorialized your grandmother, memorialize your best friend, That's your right. spirit, your, That's your, right. your, your, your thinking. Yeah, Yeah, and, and people often say, well, I want to get published. What should I do? And so how should I write it? And I always say, enjoy the journey. Don't think of the destination. Ah, I love that, of course. Because yeah. once you start thinking of, oh, my gosh, which publisher? What is, you know, what do they want out there and what, what's popular? Your creativity gets squashed a bit. So just I have one saying that says, let it rip. Just, <laughs> just I like right. that. Just it right. Well, that's the only thing. When you say, if, if you want to write, say, suspense, mm -hmm. read as much suspense as you mm -hmm. can. My fear is always um, that I'm going to be copying. You know, it's oh. like, oh, so it's like, oh, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should read fairy tales. I don't know. <laughs> just that's the best form of flattery <laughs> copying, isn't it? <laughs> I, I guess so. I guess. <laughs> yeah. But I'll do it better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm more. I don't believe in better or worse. I just think it'll be differently, different. differently. Yeah, and so actually, that's an interesting point, though, because when I, usually when I'm uh, writing a book, mm -hmm. I don't read that much. Right, right now, I'm right. in a, I'm in in between books. I'm in a, a reading zone. I read all the memoirs I can get my hands on. But I know I've got already another book idea in my brain. And don't ask me because I'm superstitious okay. about talking no, about no, it. No. All right, all right. <laughs> I won't. Forewarned. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> but it'll be interesting. Mm. Um, and so, I, but now I'm in a reading zone. Mm. And I just soak up all the information. Um, so in terms of copying, you know, everyone has to see what works best for them. I know that if some people, when they're stuck, they don't know what to write, then, then they can read to get inspired. I was always inspired reading the journals of Anna East Nin because she really got to the heart of the, her soul. Yes, she, she said she would let it rip. Yeah, <laughs> let it rip. I let quote it rip. her a lot in my book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, 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 do you, what is the biggest mistake that writers make, that you, or do you think? The biggest mistake writers make is having fear. And using excuses not to write. I have so many things to do. I'm busy this day and that day. And I, I have kids and I have a job. And, and so what I say is, well, just get up an hour earlier. <laughs> exactly. If you want to yeah. do it, you can do it. It's just a matter of committing to it. Do you have um, um, do you believe in writer's block? Or, and if so, do you have a trick to get out of it? I don't really believe in it because I, I believe that it's fear that causes writer's block. Mm -hmm. So if you can figure out how to get yourself out of fear, whether it's meditation or just writing through it, writing through it, or reading during that time when you have a little bit of like, I'm not really sure, then read mm -hmm. work. If you like one author or two authors, read all their work because the chances are you like the voice that they're writing in. And so, yes, you might end up flattering them in that way, but it's also a way to inspire you. Read poetry. Poetry really inspires. I love reading Rumi when I'm stuck, or mm. Billy Collins, ex-New Yorker. He's a lot of fun and humorous. Um, and so find people that you enjoy reading. I'm, on, I'm gonna throw mm. another recommendation in there, and that would be Use one of these writing prompts. Oh, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Sell my books. My publicist would love you. I'm serious. <laughs> See, she has the best writing prompts in yeah. here. And it would be the, just to give you, you, get yourself out of the box yeah. and put you put on another level. And who knows what will come out of that. Yeah. And, and when, when we say writing, when I say writing prompts, um, it's not like it's, it's a two-day thing. It's no. like a page. Get, yeah, write about, about your first kiss. <laughs> exactly. Or write about your first bicycle ride. Because sometimes when we go back to back to childhood events, mm -hmm. it's easier for us to write because they're familiar. If we get start writing about something we're not familiar about, it, it gets a little tricky. It can get tricky. Right, and you can insert your first bicycle into whatever you're writing. Exactly. You know, maybe. I mean, who yeah. knows? But yeah. yeah. So Nostalgia is always great to, yeah. to oh. break any uh. so-called writer's block if you have <laughs> I it. I find the older I get, the better I like uh. nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> Very and true. And the more large it becomes. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's like oh, I yeah. have a big bundle <laughs> of nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, what are they going to find on your website when they go there? Oh, my website um, has everything, actually. It has <laughs> maybe too be much. some writing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I've been told I should put writing prompts on it, but I want you to buy the book. No, seriously. Uh, <laughs> no writing prompts on my website. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it has all my books and descriptions of them, reviews of them, and, uh, and I have events places that I'll be giving workshops. I have all the articles I've written. You know, I, I blog for Psychology Today, blog, blog for Medium and Thrive Global. So mm -hmm. all those articles are on there. So if you just don't want to read a book, you want to get inspired by an yeah, article, you yeah. can go on there. And some of my poetry's on there too. And 
everything about me, it's kind of, I'm an open book, pretty much. <laughs> no pun <laughs> intended, yeah. And they could probably find this. And they could find that, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, so it's, uh, I don't sell books on my website. It's sold through the bookstores or, you know, Amazon okay. and distributors. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they can find a lot of juicy information. Yeah. And you can also ha get my newsletter if you, you can sign up for my newsletter, which every month I review a book that I've read that I love, and I talk about, I get also give writing prompts on my newsletter, free uh -huh, writing prompts, okay. it's free, <laughs> and then I talk about, you know, last month I talked about Father's Day, this month I talk about summer, mm -hmm. um, this coming month I should say, and so, yeah, I, I, they all have themes, each, each one has a theme. Great, yeah. okay. So definitely worth checking that out. Um, when you say workshops, well, are your workshops based on, are they teaching people to write or are they, what are your workshops about? They're all different. The one I'm teaching at the Open Center uh, this weekend is called Writing for Bliss, which will be basically a summary of my book. Mm -hmm. um, helping people inspire, um, give inspiration for, for writing and for moving it forward. I also teach memoir workshops. I taught at the Santa Barbara Writers Conference recently, so if someone wants to write a memoir or start a memoir and they're mm. stuck, they come and they get, you know, they get inspired. Someone <laughs> reviewed my book and said that it's a combination of Dalai Lama meets Natalie Goldberg. <laughs> and if you don't know Natalie Goldberg, I, that, and well, everyone's heard of Dalai Lama, I'm so touched because she's the guru of personal, you know, Buddhist writing, and mm. she just, she's one of those who, she, one of her books was called Writing Down the Bones, and it's a very wow. incredible book, uh, trying to get you to write from your heart center, so mm. anyway. Uh, I try to incorporate some wisdoms in there. Actually, my publisher wants me to, this is, this I'm talking about, I'm not superstitious about okay. it. <laughs> he wa wants me to write a book of, mm -hmm. um, of wisdoms to go along with this, writing for bliss, just to pull out of here, because I've shared some things just kind of for the life journey. Mm -hmm. I find that a lot of people that now need wisdoms to hold on to. They're a little bit lost and not sure about what's happening. Yeah. I, I have a lovely publisher friend and she said um, she, she'd love to meet a person who doesn't have a book inside them. But Ooh. so far she <laughs> hasn't. So I'm thinking this is so, I, I think it's I, from the mundane of just getting your feelings out to the universal feeling of maybe this could be a way to solve some problems or to get better insight mm -hmm. or to uh, well, you know, things mm -hmm. that we've been talking about, because these are, these are troubling times. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. they are. Yeah. Um, so, it, and just a, a way to write. But I think, I would say this would be, if, if you're interested, and according to my publisher friend, everybody's interested. <laughs> um, if you're interested, this would probably be the best way to start. Um, just because you get a background, you get a, a sort of a framework, and then you get those marvelous prompts that can get you started, and then mm -hmm. Uh, your encouragement is let it rip. <laughs> let, let it rip. Let it Have rip. no fear and let it rip. Yeah, and and make yourself uh, make yourself known, even if it's just to yourself. And give yeah. yourself the gift of time to write. Beautiful, beautiful. I am so thrilled, Diana, that you took time out to uh, come here and brave the traffic. So uh, my <laughs> pleasure. It's so great being on your show, it has and been uh, especially on this very difficult day for the New Yorkers. Yes, I understand. Yes. So. Start writing and start maybe it'll get better. It's a good time better. to start writing. Actually, that's when I went back for my MFA is at 9-11. 9-11. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Thank you.